In this video, we'll compare the advantages and disadvantages of five common tonsillectomy techniques, coblator, diathermy, cold steel, laser, and radio frequency. Let's dive into each method and see what might make one better than another for certain patients. Coblation, or cold ablation, uses a controlled low temperature plasma field created by radio frequency energy to break down tissue at a cellular level. The biggest advantage of coblation is that it generates less heat, which often means less postoperative pain and a faster recovery time. Coblation is highly effective at reducing bleeding during surgery. However, coblation equipment can be more expensive and some tissue might be left behind due to the ablation technique. Diathermy tonsillectomy uses high-frequency electric current to both cut tissue and coagulate blood vessels, minimizing intraoperative bleeding. This method is beneficial for cases where bleeding control is essential. However, diathermy operates at a higher temperature, which can cause more thermal injury and often leads to increased postoperative pain. This technique may also carry a higher risk of secondary bleeding. Cold steel tonsillectomy, or traditional tonsillectomy, involves manually removing the tonsils with a scalpel or scissors, followed by suturing or packing. This technique generally has low postoperative pain due to reduced thermal injury, and it is cost-effective. However, it tends to result in more intraoperative bleeding, which can make surgery longer and may require additional measures for bleeding control. Laser tonsillectomy uses a focused beam, typically a CO2 or KTP laser, to vaporize and excise tissue. Lasers offer precise control, ideal for partial tonsillectomies. Lasers are highly effective at providing hemostasis, reducing bleeding, and allowing for a more precise removal. However, laser equipment can be costly, and the heat generated by lasers may increase the risk of tissue burns and postoperative pain. Radiofrequency tonsillectomy works similarly to coblation but at higher temperatures, using radiofrequency energy to ablate tonsil tissue. This method provides effective hemostasis and it's versatile enough for both full and partial tonsillectomies. However, the higher temperature may lead to more thermal injury, increasing postoperative pain. Some studies suggest that radiofrequency tonsillectomy has a slightly higher risk of secondary bleeding compared to cold techniques. Each technique has its unique strengths and is suited to different patient needs. Coblation and cold steel tonsillectomies are often preferred due to their balanced benefits of lower pain and controlled bleeding. For cases where bleeding control is critical, diathermy and radiofrequency are reliable. Ultimately, the best choice depends on the individual patient, their pain tolerance, and the surgeon's expertise with each method.